Coming up in this week's Wharf and Chips, I am joined by a cutting tool expert, and we're going to be discussing how you should look to machine difficult to machine materials that can be supplied by our sponsors at Interco Special Steels and Alloys. I'm also keen to learn how his job has evolved during the COVID-19 pandemic. Welcome to Swarth and Chips. So Matt, tell us a little bit about ITC, please. Okay, so ITC are a UK-based company. We're based up at Tamworth. Uh, it's our 30th anniversary this year, so well-established company. Um, we have a full suite of grinding machines on site. I think there's probably 30 grinding machines now. Uh, and we offer a full range of uh, reconditioning, regrinding, re specials, and obviously our main product is our, our own product of aluminium cutters, steel cutters and routers and that sort of cutter. Anything solid carbide, we can make it. Sure, you also have a, a, a select few partners, strategic partners. Yes, so some of our partners are Whittier, who we deal with for our indexable milling, turning, drilling products. Uh, big Kaiser, so we've got the Big Plus uh, brand is, is uh, the, the, the well-known uh, worldwide spindle um, holding devices and stuff like that. Uh, and some, some lesser ones, Kemler, uh, stock we work with now as well. So. We have a very big portfolio now. So it's fair to say you're not after the commodity market. You have to. You're selling. You're selling premium quality tooling. Yes, I think our, our products would be classed as not cheap at all, but they do a fantastic job, and you get your money's worth because of the performance of the cutters. Yeah, and and and, and that's a big part of it, isn't it? Selling premium toolings, but it's only half of the journey. Presumably, we you have. You've got experienced time served engineers. You've got good sales guys. A good good infrastructure within the business at Tamworth also. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I worked this out the other day. I think the average of length of service of the sales team, this is the external sales team, is coming on for close to 20 years. That's how long the guys have been there. I'm one of the newbies. I've just passed <laughs> four years and there's a couple of guys, uh, Gary and Chris have come in and, and Ness as well since I joined. Um, but the, the guys have been there for a long time. That says a lot about the company. The people internally, there's people that have been there since day one. Wow, that so worked with Peter and um, built the company years. up. Yes, so it's well established. Um, they must be doing something very well for the guys to just, you know what it's like with, with the um, with, with the job market. If, you, if people don't like it, they move on, don't they? And, and people seem to stay, so. Yeah, people talk with their feet, of course. So you're almost in a unique position. You're, you may be the biggest manufacturer that also sells other products, if that makes sense. You're, a you're almost a hybrid of a manufacturer and a distributor, aren't you? Yeah, it's, it's strange how, how we don't work as a distributor, although we are obviously doing more um, consignments and, and vend um, to the bigger customers, mm -hmm. the bigger spending customers. But we like to go in and offer a solution. And I think if you've only got a small suite of tools, there's only so much of that solution you can offer and then someone else has to come in and offer the rest. As, as an apps engineer like you are, it's, it's, um, it's perfect, isn't it? So you're, I've got a suite of uh, factored products from around the world, some of the finest tools in the world and products. But equally, I can have something made in Tamworth pretty darn quick if I need it. Exactly, exactly. It's all the bases covered. So any application, um, aluminium, steel, a lot of the um, special alloys, the exotic materials as well. Now we're getting more and more business on that. We've got the ranges to cover it. We've got the insert grades if it's an indexable. We've got the carbide uh, geometries and grades if it's solid carbide. Yeah, you, you mentioned um, you know ex exotic materials. As you can see, our sponsor Interco Special Steels and Alloys. Yes. They're one of the leading suppliers of difficult to machine materials for aerospace, oil and gas, general manufacturing. And obviously, your background, time served engineer. You've worked for many companies, but. How should we look at machining some of these more challenging materials? You know, yeah. what, I know horses for courses, different applications, but if we generalize, how, how should we look at, you know, yeah. machining these challenging materials? So I think, first of all, work holding is always an issue. It's always something exotic looking, isn't it? It's always, it's not a nice square that you can hold lovely in, in a vice. So work holding has got to be key, but also your tool holding. So we're talking about the big Kaiser range. Um, when you're machining these materials, any run out on the tool really seems to magnify the, the, the poor, poorer tool life that you get. So if you're using the big Kaiser range of tool holders, it makes a big difference. So you've got to think about your tool holder. You've got to think about your tool paths. A lot of these materials don't like any dwells. So you've got to keep your tool in cut all the way through. So, so thinking about your tool path, oh, I'm going to st stop in that corner. Is that where the tool's wearing? You know, it's mm -hmm. that sort of thing you've got to think about all the way through. 
Yeah, and like when you look at machining a pocket, for instance, in these materials, there's so many different ways, isn't there? Some people drill the corners out and then join them up with an end mill. Some people tricoid and mill the corners out. And I guess there's no real answer, is there, which is best? I, I think sometimes it's a bit of trial and error and what should... I've had a few instances re recently doing trials where what should work should uh, doesn't work and what shouldn't work actually does work. It, it's a bit like that, but it sort of limits your, your options a little bit uh, when, when the materials are that, that exotic, mm -hmm. so... So in terms of the strategy, there's various things we can do, isn't there? You know, reduce width to cut, things like that. But in terms of the tooling, which is why you're here, how do ITC fit that mould? Do you have a suite of tools for these materials? Yeah, so the first thing I would say was we come and look at the, the application. We can do that obviously on site or at the minute we can look off site. We do have CAD CAM software on site now to actually look at models and we can actually look at the suite of tools we can choose from and put together a real good comprehensive range of tools to do the job with speeds and feeds and obviously the added bonus of having a, a technical guy on site to run the tools with you um, if, if the circumstances are, are correct. Yeah, I find that interesting. So you, you at home, you know, please do comment on the social media platform of your choosing where you're watching this program. But, you know, do we, you know, do you need help? Do, all engineers need help, don't we? As good as we are, they can always learn something every single day. So do you look to get application engineers to uh, give you support, either over the phone or in person? I'll be interested to learn more, so please, please leave a comment. But, is, you know, how, how often are you called? And obviously COVID-19 restrictions at the moment, I'm sure, in some, in some areas. But you're an application engineer first. You know, you're not yes. a sales guy. Yes. Um, so how often are you, you called upon? The phone and the email don't, never stops, which is great. I, I'd sooner be busy than not busy. Obviously, it's a bit more difficult going out and about at the minute, but I am running trials and, and off going to customers where, where required. Sometimes you have to be, you have to physically go and look at what's happening. Yeah. It's, it's impossible to do it over the phone or even with the, the new sort of um, uh, video calls you can do with the various companies. It, sometimes you've got to be there. You actually have to listen. You have to see what's happening. You have to see the setup. How's the machine reacting? So it is it's more and more difficult if you're not on site. So it's, it's been a, a, a strange time. You know, it's, it's, it's been a, a, an unprecedented time. So we've had to evolve. Uh, I've had to evolve as a technical applications engineer. ITC as a company have had to evolve um, to the circumstance as well, which in fairness, we, we, I think we've done very, very well. Yeah, and we've got a couple of the new products on the table here. I believe this is a, a Widia product, and we've also got one from the, uh, you know, from your Tamworth, uh, you know, from your Tamworth manufacturing. Yes. So, in, you know, just talk us through those products. Again, talking about some of these more tricky materials. Are any of these applicable to tricky materials? And how would you look to adopt them on, yeah, a, a yes. difficult to machine material? Okay, so the first one is from Whittier. This is the new Whittier Extreme. It's got them very, very excited. And um, from what we've seen of it so far, I think it is a very, very good tool. Um, the very mill range has been around for a long time, but this one is, is, is the next step forward. It's like uh, your Olympic athlete compared to your, your part runner. You know, it's, it can do all sorts. We've got to trial it. And I, I'd say to the, to the uh, viewers, let us come in and have a play with it because it, what it can do with the ramping capabilities, the plunging, the depth of cut and mm -hmm. slotting, it looks very, very decent. Sure, and the one with the, the, the gold, the, the gold uh, bronzy colour coat, and I know you've got a similar tool for different materials, different geometries. Yes, so this one is a ITC um, innovation, it's what we've been working on recently. We have got the aluminium uh, version of this, so it's probably a bit difficult to see without uh, coming in close, but there are little chip breakers down the side. Mm -hmm. Now the idea is that if um, we're talking about difficult materials uh, as well at the same time, a lot of people will be using trachoidal type methods. So trachoidal with more difficult to machine, uh, difficult to machine materials, obviously you've got to drop your step over and that mm -hmm. sort of stuff when you're doing it. But it's a very controlled process. So with exotics more than anything, you've got to control your chip thickness. If you're not controlling your chip thickness, you're getting more heat into the tool, into the work piece, and sooner or later the tool just gives up the ghost. So what we've designed here is a, a steel sort of stainlessy type geometry with the chip breakers in. So when we do a trachoidal uh, application, instead of having a chip that is the whole length of the flute, so it, it's, they come off like little needles, mm -hmm. and over the course of the application, those needles pile up and they pile up and they pile up 
and sooner or later it caused problems with your swarf conveyor, with, with your swarf bin overflowing, but mm -hmm. it's a general problem with getting that swarf and managing it within the machine. Sure, so is, that, is that the way the market's uh, moving towards these chip breakers? Obviously, you go way back when, we, I call it waterline machining, you're just dropping down the Z-axis and you're just yeah. taking off two, three, five, ten mil at a time. Whereas now we're looking at engaging this tool. So do you think everyone's going to go down this chip breaker route? I think, not saying they're being forced down that route, but with the swarf control being such a problem, that it just makes it, it seems to make it simpler to manage. If the swarf is still the needle shape, because obviously you're controlling your step over, your feed per tooth, the spindle speed, that, and that mm. doesn't change with your cord. That's some, some ways why it's a good method to use. But if you can control that needle to be shorter, lighter, it seems easier to evacuate it from the machine mm -hmm. and away from the workpiece. So again, if you're watching at home, please do comment, you know, wherever you're watching this video, comment, do you use tools with a chip breaker? Maybe you don't, maybe you, maybe you, you don't see it fitting within your strategy. Maybe it should, but maybe maybe that's something you're not looking to adopt just yet. But either way, please do, please do comment. Um, again, to me, it, it, it's just a no brainer, but this, the M1200 cutter there, it's one I've seen many times in the field. Mm. Um, and if we're facing some difficult to machine materials, typically somebody would go in with a 45 degree face mill, yes. you know, 0 0.707, uh, you know, but with this one cutter, you, could, you can change that quite significantly, can't yes. you? Yes, so the M1200, so the M1200 Mini, it takes the HN07 style insert. So what we have is a, a 45 degree body, which is this one we can see on the table now, but also comes in a uh, 15 degree, like a high feed setup and a 60, 60 degree, heavy roughing setup. Mm -hmm. Same inserts fit in all three bodies. So what I find is for a 45 degree tool is the best the best I've seen personally from all the ones I've ever used. It's cost effective. You've got a six edged insert, double sided. So the inserts go into the pocket, six edge double sided giving you 12 possible cutting edges. So it's very cost effective. Yeah, yeah. Because the grades that are available cover aluminium, stainless, exotics, steel, cast iron. You've got a full range of geometry and grade combinations. And also, if you're looking to create a, a really good surface finish, there are actually wiper inserts available for it as well. So in the case of this cutter, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six teeth. You'd have five teeth with the standard insert in, one wiper uh, insert, and that just sweeps behind the main inserts, just creating a surface finish as you go. So if, if surface finish is very, very critical, mm -hmm. then that's uh, another way we could use the cutter. But where I've had some success recently is using the high feed version of this cutter. Um, I generally ask the question of the customer, because customers like the high feeds, not more people are using them. Mm -hmm. Because most people don't have huge spindles, usually I'd say 50, 50 mil on a BT40 is, is ample on a high feed. But sometimes, say, all I'm doing with it is I'm blocking down material. I'm just taking the faces off material. I'm not making any ramping movements, m making any plunging mm -hmm. movements. So if that's the case, this becomes a very cost-effective high feed. It runs at exactly the same speeds and feeds as, a, as a, a proper high feed cutter would, but you're getting 12 cutting edges. Instead of, I think, uh, the M370 we do is six. It's three-edge double-sided. Mm -hmm. The VXF, which is our new high feed range, is only four edges single-sided. It's very soft cutting action though, so there are reasons you go forward with that one first. Mm -hmm. But if you're uh, machining very exotic materials, so your insert life, whatever you do, <laughs> it's not going to last forever. Yeah. If you go for a 12-edged insert, it's actually probably less cost than the six-edged insert, and that's what you're doing with it, then it's, it's got to be more cost effective. Yeah, recently I've been to Interco, you know, the sponsors of the show. They do not only supply difficult to machine materials, they actually machine it as well. They do offer okay. a subcon arm to get um, their customers out of, of trouble when required. Yes. And they would say you have to treat this material differently to other materials. We, we already know that. But the, the, the thing I come up against a lot is how many teeth you put into a cutter. Some people say you want more to reduce your chip thickness. Uh, other people say you want it fairly coarse and just play around with your, your width of cut. Where, where do you stand on that? first thing I look at where I think about the number of teeth is, is the actual spindle that the tool's going on to. Um, it's no point putting uh, multiple numbers of teeth in a cutter and then finding the machine physically cannot push mm -hmm. the cutter through on the feed and then you've got to drop your feed so far you know, from where it could be that you're tickling the work rather. Mm -hmm. It just to me doesn't seem any, any point in doing that. So, sure, and do you always want a tooth in cut or sometimes, like you said, the more teeth, you might have a couple of teeth in cut at any one time? Yeah, I've, see... A general rule of thumb for me is if it's a BT40 or BT30 or a lower powered spindle, 
I tend to go up to about 50 mil. Mm -hmm. Maybe on a 45, I, I could probably use the 63. But if we've got a choice of a 50 with four, five or six teeth, I'd probably go with a five to start with. Four, okay, it's not fast enough probably, but, but six might just be enough that if you really want to push that cutter, it just takes it, so the spindle, there's no point running the spindle at 100% spindle load all the time, just to say, yes, I've got an extra tough in the cutter. Yeah. You're not going to gain anything from it because you're going to have to, at some stage, drop right back on the feed. So you may as well have run a five tough cutter at the mm -hmm. right speed and feed and run a six two for a reduced feed rate. So. Yeah, sure. And it's important on these materials, cutting tools are key, but you need to look at everything. Work old and key. If there's any vibration in these materials, you can forget it. Get your, uh, the correct concentration on your coolant. There's a lot of external variables, isn't there? It's sort of, um, it's a catch-22, really. With, the, with these real exotic materials and hard materials as well, you tend to try and use a harder grade of insert. So that's great. You've got to use a hard grade, but the trouble with the carbide, because it's so hard, it's actually quite brittle. So as soon as you get any vibration in the job, it tends to take the edge off the insert. So, okay, so you think, well, I can overcome that by using a tougher grade of insert. So tougher is softer. It will handle the vibration better, but it won't get the tall life because it will wear quicker. So mm -hmm. it, 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 yeah, that make, that's why they're called difficult to machine materials, yeah. I guess, Please, because it's exactly what, it's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it's worth pointing out that, you know, if, you've, if you haven't machined these before, potentially you're gonna need your, your hand holding uh, early, early doors. Uh, so how do they get in touch with ITC? We've got a very good website. So the first thing I do is go onto the website. That will lead you to talk to someone in the office. Find out who your local technical rep is or your sales engineer. They're all very good experienced guys. Um, if they can't come in at the minute, and we understand that, that, that that's the case, just give us a call. Uh, if you have a model or you have a drawing of what you're trying to achieve, we can give you some ideas on not just the tools to, to use, a method to, to produce the component, speeds and feeds to actually cut it. And just finally, it's a tricky marketplace at the moment. We're in the, amidst the, in the middle of a pandemic. You know, how are things at ITC and how, how do you see you know, your job evolving? Yeah, evolve's a, a good word because I think we, we evolved from day one. Um, of course, coming up for a year nearly now, isn't it? And credit really to, to Peter and, and the whole team that um, we've managed to evolve and we've, we've carried on throughout supplying, supporting the customers. Um, and I think... From what we've been doing in the background we've, with the new releases of tools, making sure we're up to date with, uh, with catalogues, brochures, that sort of, and keeping everybody in, in the know of what's going on. I think the, the way I find it is as long as I know what's happening, it takes your mind off worrying about it. It's the unknown, we, it's, it's a human yeah. nature. We, we don't know what's going on. And you know, credit to Pete, he's been professional but compassionate with us all the way through. And I, I think we're in a very good position as a company because we make our own tools, here in the UK, it gives us you know, uh, a good way of getting those tools. I won't lie and say there's been any, no disruption in deliveries coming out of Europe. I think everybody has, has seen that since the, the Brexit. That's slowly getting better, but it's not quite there yet, but that will happen. But we keep a lot of stock at ITC as well. That's the other thing to, to bear in mind, not just of our own products, but Whittier, Big Kaiser, Camler, it's all there. It can, be, it can be sent out next day from our place. So I think the future looks bright. It's, it's still a strange time. Um, it's not quite ready to go back to normal, but I think when it does, I think we're, we're, we're there, we're ready to go. We can still be contacted at any time. We are still there. You might not have seen a rep for a little while, but please call. We, you know, we, we can talk to you on the phone. Um, the, the video calls are, are you know, doing mm -hmm. more and more of those with customers now, which is always great. Good. Well, thank you very much for coming into the studio today. It's uh, talking about the um, you know, some of the materials our sponsor Interco supply. Yeah. It's, been, it, 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 it's, it's true. It's true. Everything we've talked about today is absolutely true. Look after your cutting tools. Treat them in you know how they were designed to be used, and it, and it will pay dividends. But Definitely. thanks for coming in today. No, you're welcome. Good to see you. So if you've looked. You know, if you've enjoyed anything about this show today, please do like, comment and subscribe to our channels wherever you're watching this. If you agree or even disagree, please do write on the channel and maybe Matt or myself, we will come back to you. But thank you very much for watching at home and keep those spindles turning.